In this video, we're going to take a look at the sharpening and noise removal adjustments in Camera Raw, which are two settings that some people have a lot of trouble with, but I hope to sort of uh, simplify them for you in this video. So to begin with, let's go up to the panels options up the top here, and you'll notice two little triangles. So this is a detail panel. So if we click on that, you'll notice you have sharpening and noise reduction options available to you. And you'll also have this little warning here that says here, if you want a more accurate preview of your sharpening to zoom in at 100%, which is entirely accurate. So to begin with, before we start playing around with any settings, let's zoom in to 100% on our image. And as you can see, to start off with, there is a fair bit of color noise there in, in my image because it is quite a colorful image. And it is reasonably uh, sharp and um, reasonably in focus, I should say, from my original shot. Now, in sharp, when sharpening, you have the amount, radius, detail, and masking values. Now, the amount is simply the amount of sharpening that you want to apply to your image. So as you increase that, the sharpening increases to your image. And it can look quite hideous once you get to about 150. Um, when making adjustments to sharpening, you have some really neat, uh, really neat ways of viewing your sharpening now that just weren't available in Camera Raw previously. If you were to hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac, you'll notice now when you click on a mount, you can view just your um, luminance or, or detail from your photograph without any color information. And this is really good because it allows you to be able to make more accurate sharpening adjustments without being affected by um, the colors that are in, in your images because sometimes they can distract you and, and put you off how much uh, sharpening that you actually want to apply to your image. Now you can also hold down the Alt or Option key for the radius. And this will actually show you the radius of the sharpening that is being applied to your image. So as you increase it, the radius increases and it increases in your actual preview, which is quite neat and only goes up to 3.0. Um, now, in most cases, I like to keep that around, in Camera Raw specifically, I like to keep that at 1, uh, just because I think it gives a more sort of a natural um, appearance when sharpening. Now, you also have the detail setting. So this is the amount of detail that you want to preserve when you're actually making your sharpening adjustment. So with this, you can also hold down the Alter Option key, and it'll show you the areas that it's going to retain. So as you increase that, you'll notice that the actual detail in the sharpening uh, increases. So you really want to keep that around 25% if you can. I probably wouldn't recommend going too far over, but it all also depends on what you've actually shot your image at in terms of ISO. So if you've shot at a really high ISO, you're going to have a really noisy and grainy image. So you want to sort of take that into account. But if you shot at 100, then you could probably increase the amount of detail in your image accordingly. Underneath detail, we have masking. Now this is a feature of sharpening that I love because it allows you to exclude sharpening from areas of your image. And the way it works is it creates a mask similar to a, a layer mask in Photoshop um, that excludes the where the actual sharpening is applied to. Now the easiest way to see how this actually is implemented is by holding down your Alt key on a PC or your Option key on your Mac whilst you're actually making adjustments to the slider. So as you can see here, now we've got a white screen. Now as I start to increase the values, you'll start to see some greys, dark greys and blacks come into the shot. Now these are the areas that are actually going to be excluded from sharpening. Now if you start off at value 0, you're going to go from sort of the shadows and as you increase it right the way to 100, you actually enter the highlights. So the areas in white are the areas that are getting the sharpening applied to, the areas in black are being excluded. Um, so it's extremely useful if you've shot a high ISO image and you've got a lot of noise in the shadows and you don't want to apply additional sharpening to the shadows and emphasize that noise. So this is where that becomes really quite useful. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to see uh, 
when you're actually making the adjustment to your image, but that's where that little Alt Option uh, key control comes in to actually showing you which areas you've actually applied sharpening to. And just also remember you've got the preview option up the top here where you can actually go and preview the amount of sharpening that has been applied. So preview on, off, on, off. So that's sharpening. So it, you've got a lot of control with the amount and type of sharpening that you apply to your image. Underneath the sharpening settings, you have noise reduction. Now noise reduction allows you to reduce the amount of noise overall in your image. Now you can choose either luminance or color. Now luminance allows you to reduce the amount of noise over the, the detail or brightness of, of your, your image. So it it's actually excludes the color values from your uh, adjustment. So it's only reducing the amount of noise to the detail in your image, not the, not the color itself. Whereas color reduces the amount of color noise in your image. So to start off with, let's have a look at luminance. As we increase the value, you'll see the image will slightly uh, change and it'll slightly go smoother. Now, once you actually add some values to luminance, you have two other options available to you, which is the luminance detail and luminance contrast. Now, luminance detail itself will allow you to choose how much detail you'd like to retain in your shot just by um, increasing or decreasing that slider. Um, and in most cases, you, you want to try and retain as much detail as possible because the more luminance or color noise uh, reduction that you actually apply, the smoother your image will actually turn out and it can start to look a little pasty and, and unsightly. Um, so you, you just want to play around with that and probably around 25 to 50 is sort of an area that you want to stay within. You also have the option of adjusting the contrast of your adjustment as well, which is actually quite difficult to, to see. Um, but now if we take a look, say for example, turn the preview off, you can notice the adjustment that's been made. So we go off, on, off, on. So it's really smoothed out the image, which in this particular example, I don't believe it really needs it. So I'm going to actually drop that back to zero. And let's take a look at the color noise reduction. Because in this image, there is a lot of color noise. Now, obviously, I've overdone the sharpening <laughs> quite a bit here, but I'll just drop that back as well. Um, so, yeah, there is quite a bit of color noise in this image itself. As you can see, you've got greens, you've got reds, you've got sort of uh, magentary blue areas in this image. Now, they do look unsightly, especially when you blow them up. So in order to reduce them, if you get the color slider and increase that, see that? I've only put it to 18 if I do a preview on and off. So we go off, <gasps> color noise, on, no color noise. So that is probably my favorite control uh, out, of, out of all of them because um, that is really, really quite a fantastic result. Uh, it's really removed that color noise quite well. Uh, you also have the color detail slider there. Once again, it's the amount of detail you want to retain because as you remove that noise, you can lose some detail because it does sort of smooth things over. Um, but that's entirely entirely up to you. Just have a play with it and see what looks um, best to your eye visually. So that's the sharpening and noise reduction settings available to you in the detail panel. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the HSL slash grayscale panel.